Hi, welcome back to the bunker. Thanks very much for dropping by. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how I finished the river sections of the Italian boards. So I hope you enjoy this short movie showing you some of the techniques that I use for that. Uh, please drop me a line if you have any questions and thank you very much for subscribing. Before we begin I wanted to have a look at some images of rivers so you can see the style of river that I'm actually trying to recreate. These are a couple of images of a Italian river and as you can see from the colour it's actually quite green so this is the colour that uh, is going to be represented on the board. Okay this is the overview of the board as it sits now. Uh, with this movie we're going to concentrate on finishing the river. Uh, these boards can actually be switched around so the river can be in the middle. Um, the river is quite different than my normal rivers. Normally I would carve the river straight into the board uh, and then pour resin in them. Because this river is quite a wide uh, and fairly deep river it would be unpractical to pour that amount of resin uh, just onto a plywood uh, board because you may end up getting twisting and uh, misshaping. So we're going to go for more of a painted finish effect on this uh, river which is quite different and I thought you might like to follow the progress of uh, how that works. The bridge uh, is going to be is removable so I'm going to remove the bridge and then um, start finishing uh, uh, the river. At the moment it's just got a base coat um, of paint that is just splashed over from the rock work. We're actually going to cover and coat this river. Uh, the river is actually um, have a, has a plywood base so this is just the plywood that you can see coming through um, through the, the sort of paint that's uh, splashed off off of the rocks so we're going to now f uh, finish that so the first thing we need to do is is add a texture uh, to create the idea of the water flowing down the river to add a texture to the river I'm going to use um, my resin that I normally use, this is a, like a resin coat, uh, this will create the texture. What's going to be nice about this is that um, when it's mixed uh, just on its own it has a tendency to sag or, or slump, uh, which means that it will create a sort of softer finish. So I'm literally just going to paint this onto the board. I've pigmented it blue um, so you can see um, what's going on and also that uh, it will just help the painting process on the next uh, sort of stages. So I'm just going to paint that in. Uh, I'm thinking about how the water will actually flow, which direction it's going to flow, how it's going to flow around the rocks um, and things like that. It's important um, that you, you think about that. If, if your boards are going to be switched round, so if you've got a river that goes both ways, uh, then clearly you're going to have some difficulty when it um, breaks against rocks and things. So you just have to think about how you're going to get over that before you start. It will slump uh, and sort of settle out, which would be quite nice uh, to create that sort of watery um, ripple. For this coat I'm going to add um, uh, some thickener to the resin because um, I, I want it to start being a bit more frothy, uh, a bit more fast moving. So this will help um, build up some nicer sort of rougher shapes uh, as it hits the bank and other obstacles down the river. So you can see I'm building it up along the river bank, hiding the seam between the rock work and the water uh, clearly do, you know doing it in this this way round so the water is flowing over the rock work and creating these nice sort of rougher areas so I'm pleased with how that's looking um, I'm gonna keep adding a coat now this coat I've thickened right up because this is um, now going to be my white water or the start of my white water so I've added a lot of filler uh, into this one and then I can then make it look quite different um, from the from the other coats and, and make it spikier and uh, sort of almost sculpt it in while it's in place. 
And this is quite a fast moving um, river. If you wanted uh, a slower river, then you wouldn't obviously put so much white water in. Okay, now the resin is set, uh, it's time to start um, adding the colour. Now at the moment there's too much contrast between the, the blue and the white uh, because it's just an undertone. So we need to um, blend all that into almost the same colour but using subtle shades. So I've mixed up um, the three basic colours, a, a, a dark tone, mid tone and a light tone. But to start off with I'll just generally spreading the paint across the whole surface and I'm going to mix the paints um, up as I go so this is the the sort of mid-tone colour but I'm not worrying about um, where the where the lighter colours where the washes are going to be um, or you know where the water's breaking I literally want to get the whole tone of the river uh, right One of the interesting points um, that I sort of thought about when I mixed these colours is I wanted the colour um, to sort of go with the environment. Now the easiest way to do that is to actually use the same colour palette that I used for uh, the sand in each one of my colours. This sort of cross pollinates the sort of colours uh, across the media and helps the whole thing look natural as if it's all toned with the same colours. So there's a lot of sand um, colour within this sort of pale, um, well e each one of the, the, the sort of river colours that I've mixed what up. What I do now is I, I want to darken up and given, uh, I want to give the impression that there's, there's more rock work and things going on underneath the surface. So the only real way to do that is, um, is to start putting some darkness. So, the idea is that the, the darkness that I'm putting in is is the rock work that is obscured by the water to give it yeah, some... I'm pretty happy with the overall tone now. Um, I've, it's a good idea sometimes to step back and look at it um, because you'll get a better idea of what, uh, how the colours are blending. Um, so I've stepped back and I'm pretty happy. Uh, I need to now start creating depth. Um, now I've got the blend so I'm going to dry um, this off or help help speed this up with a uh, with a hot air gun. Dry this off uh, before I start applying um, some washes uh, to see if I can get some more depth um, out of the, out of the painted surface. Okay, that's the um, the first coat dry. Uh, so now I'm going to um, put on a thin wash of my um, my mid tone colour. I'm going to do that over the whole whole board. Okay, I've dried off the um, the uh, wash, the first wash that I've just put on. Um, so now I want to bring out some of that texture. So I'm now going to, I've mixed up a, a, a white with some of the other colours um, that I've got. So I've still using the same um, tonal uh, sort of colours. And now I'm just going to uh, start dry brushing some of the, that texture back in. Now the tricky thing now is to, is to dry brush it in and not show the the brush strokes so that's that's the tricky thing that's why i'm using um quite a, a, a big brush i prefer to use a big brush um, to do these big dry brushes and you'll see that i'm changing direction and i'm only just touching uh, the board okay i'm now um, gonna spray in using some of my darker tone use the airbrush to pick out some of the um, sort of shadowy areas that I want to, uh, to pick out. Uh, the airbrush is really good for this, it will also really subtly blend um, any of that rock work that I put in on the previous painting uh, exercise uh, and I can just start to change that colour throughout. Using quite broad, broad strokes and using some distance just so I can subtly um, change that overall. Okay, the other thing I'm um, doing now is I'm literally I'm going round um, with a small brush and just picking out some details. I'm trying to get um, that impression that the water is flowing and that there's undercurrents and you know swirls of water. Mm. 
I spent some time going um, round very carefully, um, painting the sort of white lines where I want them. Now uh, I'm going to just go in with some white and literally touch off the bits that I want to be really, really rough. So I've, um, I've finished all the painting, uh, so I'm really happy with that and gone round and touched up uh, the highlights where I wanted them. Uh, now to give the river its shine, uh, I'm going to give the whole um, river a, a coat of resin which will give it uh, that gloss finish uh, that we need to create the water effect. And you can see the, uh, the, the colour difference by adding the varnish or resin is quite, quite a lot. It will darken and sharpen up uh, all the, all the colours underneath. Final little um, touch to the water is um, I want to soften up some of the areas where uh, the spray would be from the uh, from the crushing rocks. So I'm using this sort of uh, wadding material, which I'll resin over. Okay, so I've let the uh, the resin dry overnight and uh, come back in the morning and I had a look at it and I'm still feeling that the water is, uh, although it's the correct colour, I've checked it against my reference, I just think it's almost too bright for the overall board. So I'm going to mix up some more resin and, and just try and tone that down a little bit more um, to suit the sort of uh, World War II era. So uh, I've mixed the resin with um, some sort of pigment uh, and I'm going to then flow this over the top uh, and what I've tried to do is not mix the pigment in uh, too much so I get a, almost like a marbling effect uh, going on uh, and so this will just tone down some of that green. Okay, Now the river's had um, a coat of resin um, which I pigmented up with the sort of brown sludgy colour. I'm just adding more of this um, into the actual resin uh, on the actual river itself. Uh, so this is um, resin pigment that I'm actually adding in to the uh, to the resin, applied resin. And I'm, and I'm making this uh, sort of ripple uh, and sort of create a sort of uh, oily pattern as it sort of flows down the river uh, to get the idea that the silt has been sort of dredged up from the bottom of the river and, and is sort of on its way down river. And this has helped to sort of just just slightly take the edge off of that um, that green that I uh, painted the river originally. Uh, so that's all working really nicely now. Okay, I finished the river and uh, this is what it looks like in its middle position. So we're just going to have a close look at um, what the river looks like now it's been finished. Uh, just going to run the camera down so you can have a better better view of what that looks like. I put in some extra little frothy bits and added a little jetty here uh, with a little boat which I think has come out really nice and this is the bridge, the secondary bridge that goes across to the plaza it's now in its position Hi, thanks very much again for watching. Thanks very much also for subscribing. I hope uh, you got some ideas um, to try at home yourselves. If you've got any questions, do drop me a line. Uh, thanks very much and I'll catch you next time.